Om Namo Narayanaya Jai Swami Narayan Namaste Welcome back as today we start chapter 16 A description of Jambhul Vipa King Parishit said to Sukadeva Goswami O Brahmana, you have already informed me that the radius of Bhumandala extends as far as the sun spreads its light and heat and as far as the moon and all the stars can be seen. The rolling wheels of Maharaja Priyavrata's chariot created seven ditches in which the seven oceans came into existence. Because of these seven oceans, Bhumandala is divided into seven islands. You have given a very general description of their measurement, names and characteristics. Now I wish to know of them in detail. Kindly fulfill my desire. When the mind is fixed upon Lord Vishnu and his external feature, made of the material modes of nature, that being the gross universal form, it is brought to the platform of pure goodness. In that transcendental position, one can understand Lord Vishnu, Vasudeva, who in his subtler form is self-effulgent and beyond the modes of nature. My Lord, please describe vividly how that form, which covers the entire universe, is perceived. The great Rishi responded, My dear king, there is no limit to the expansion of Lord Vishnu's material energy. This material world is a transformation of the material qualities, Sattva Guna, Rajo Guna, and Tamo Guna. Yet no one could possibly explain it perfectly, even in a lifetime as long as that of Brahma. No one in the material world is perfect, and an imperfect person could not describe this material universe accurately, even after continued speculation. My king, I shall nevertheless try to explain to you the principal regions, such as Buloka, with their names, forms, measurements, and various attributes. The planetary system, known as Bhumandala, resembles a lotus flower, and its seven islands resemble the whorl of that flower. The length and breadth of the island, known as Chambuvipa, which is situated in the middle of the whorl, are about eight million miles. Chambudvipa is round like the leaf of a lotus flower. In Chambudvipa, there are nine divisions of land, each with a length of about 72,000 miles. There are eight mountains that mark the boundaries of these divisions and separate them nicely. Amidst these divisions, or Varshas, is the Varsha name Lavrata, which is situated in the middle of the horo of the lotus. Within Lavrata Varsha is Sumeru Mountain, which is a mountain made of gold. Sumeru Mountain is like the pericarp of the lotus-like Bhumandala planetary system. The mountain's height is the same as the width of Jamvudvipa, in other words, 800,000 miles. Of that, 128,000 miles are within the earth, and therefore the mountain's height above the earth is 672,000 miles. The mountain's width is 256 miles at its summit and about 128,000 miles at its base. Just north and going further northward, one after another, are three mountains named Nila, Sveta, and Srengavan. These mark the borders of the three Varshas known as Ramyaka, Hiramyaka, and Kuru, and separate them from one another. The width of these mountains is about 16,000 miles. Lengthwise, they extend east and west to the beaches of the ocean of salt water. Going from south to north, the length of each mountain is about a tenth of that of the previous mountain, but the height of them is all the same. Similarly, south and extending from east to west are three great mountains, named from north to south, Neshada, Hemakuta, and Himalaya. Each of them is about 80,000 miles high. They mark the boundaries of the three Varshas named Hirivarsha, Kimpurusha Varsha, and Bharata Varsha. In the same way, west and east are the two great mountains named Mayavan and Gandhamadana, respectively. These two mountains, which are about 16,000 miles high, extend as far as Nila Mountain in the north and Nishada in the south. 
They indicate the borders of the Lavrata Varsha and also the Varshas known as Ketumala and Badrashva. On the four sides of the great mountain known as Sumeru are four mountains, Mandara, Meru Mandara, Suparshva, and Kumuda, which are like its belts. The length and height of these mountains are calculated to be about 80,000 miles. Now, standing like flagstaffs on the summit of these four mountains are a mango tree, a rose apple tree, a kandamba tree, and a banyan tree. These trees are calculated to have a width of about 800 miles and a height of 8,800 miles. Their branches are spread to a radius of about 8,800 miles. O oh, king, best of the Bharata dynasty, between these four mountains are four huge lakes. The water of the first tastes just like milk, the water of the second like honey, and that of the third like sugarcane juice. The fourth lake is filled with pure water. The celestial beings such as the Siddhas, Karanyas, and Gandharvas, who are known as the demigods, enjoy the faculties of these four lakes. Consequently, they have the natural perfections of mystic yoga, such as the power to become smaller than the smallest or greater than the greatest. There are also four celestial gardens named Nandana, Kaitraratha, Vibrakshaka, and Savatobrada. The best of these demigods, along with their wives, who are like ornaments of heavenly beauty, meet together and enjoy within those gardens, while their glories are sung by lesser demigods known as Gandharvas. And we're actually going to pause here. Now this is the tough chapter that I have spoken of in earlier videos that would be forthcoming, and it is a question that has plagued I guess you could say the Hare Krishna movement, um, since Swami Prabhupada translated this, because of the scientific inaccuracies that are pointed out in this, which are denied and said, no, no, they're not scientific accuracies. You have it wrong. We have it right, because this is the word of God. How should we interpret this word? Literally? Figuratively? So first of all, let me say this, and then we're going to touch on some of these inaccuracies. I read all of this in miles. It's actually not written that way. It's written as Yogshanas, but I figure in this world we're living in of kilometers and miles, most people wouldn't really know what a Yogshana is, so I just translated it into miles, which was already translated here. It's probably a little on the rough side. Also, why would we have miles when a lot of the world uses kilometers because Swami Prabhupada translated this one in America and we love our miles. <laughs> I think the rest of you are crazy who like kilometers, but that's beside the point. So the numbers are going to be a little rough and my apologies, but I just wanted to make this easier to understand by using the word miles. Now, some of you who know your mountaineering may have heard one glaring mistake. It said that one mountain named Himalayas, it says that it's 80,000 miles, but yet, according to Alexa, who I asked during a pause in the video that was edited out, she says it's only 29-something thousand miles. That's a huge difference. Now, I know that the argument is that the counting of this mile doesn't start from ocean level or below ocean level, but the mountain goes deep into the earth. And so we only see 29,000, but the rest of it is actually on Earth. I know that's probably the argument they give. Uh, I'm just going to guess because I've kind of seen this argument elsewhere, and I've mentioned it before in a book by Radha Charan. And so what I'd like to do now is just turn to the book by Radha Charan that I mentioned in the first or second video of this series. And uh, there's a link down below to this book. So this is the second book that he wrote. So I'm just going to bounce through some of the things he says here. If you want to know more, pick up the book. What he actually does is go verse by verse by verse, which I've just read to you, with an explanation. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to read his book for him. But for those who are interested, I want to give a few things, a few comments, a few arguments that show that this is scientifically accurate, that God didn't give us whacked out science. 
that's basically what I do. I just want to start the conversation because I don't have enough time in the video, even if I hold back my rambling to go into all the details. And, and uh, well, this is a long chapter, and, and th there's a lot here that he writes. So he says that the time frame that we measure our world in minutes and hours and days and years is actually an illusion. It's an illusion created by Lord Brahma, Priyavrata, and Priyavrata's descendants. So our conception of time is wrong. That's the first thing he says of interest here. So when we argue about the creation of the earth and how long things are in that creation timeline, we're off because we don't understand true creation timeline. God has his own timeline. He also then goes on to say that we perceive not the world as it is. The Lord is subtle. The Lord can't truly be seen in his pure form. When this chapter is talking about the shape of the earth and the shape of the mountains, and as I mentioned earlier, the Himalaya mountain, the problem is not that science is wrong. The problem is that science can only perceive so much because God is subtle and his creation is subtle. There are things here we physically cannot see. That is the problem. It's not that the book is wrong. It's, it's that it's just it's beyond our senses. Kind of like a dog can hear sounds beyond our ability to hear those sounds. And, and that's the argument Rada puts here. So I'm guessing he might say maybe the mountain, it's not 80,000 feet going way deep in the earth, but it actually is 29,000 feet of what we can see, but then there is a subtle mountain on top of that that keeps going to its 80,000 feet. I don't know, I actually haven't read this book by Rada. This is really the first time I'm looking at it, and I'm just pulling out bits and pieces to get you thinking and to kind of get the conversation started. I'm not really arguing that he's right or it's wrong. Just throwing some ideas out there. Now, he also talks here about how uh, the lotus flower that we mentioned is symbolic, but it also is a legitimate reference. Uh, the Lord sits on a lotus flower, as we know. And he does say something here that will make many of you go, I don't think so. He goes, uh, <laughs> and I'm reading this first for the fun of it. On the authority of the pure devotee Acharyas, all devotees, following Sukadeva's instructions must have faith that Jambudvipa and Bhumandala are flat and float on water. Thus we have the flat earth theory expounded here and we must believe that because Sukadeva is a disciple of the Lord and that's where the problems start. Let's just see what else he might say here. Uh, he points out that the Himalaya mountain as mentioned in here is not the same Himalayan mountains as we have today, as he says, we have airplanes that have flown over them, and airplanes can't go 80,000 miles. So he said, we, we take the words and we confuse things. That might be true, very likely, very likely is true if we believe this. Uh, according to the Srimad Bhagavatam, as we read earlier in this canto, the world has changed. It has physically, physically changed. So, the changes are to such an extent that we really can't fathom what the world was like beforehand. And it really is a draw. Do you want to believe all the book or some of the book or just parts of it or all of science or some of science? Where do you establish your line? I just would say if this is a topic that you're interested in, you want to know about Flat Earth, you want to dig into this, Rada's book I think probably does a pretty good job. But if you want to argue the point, if you want to say, no, this, these is con folks or whatever, they have it all wrong, definitely pick up his books so you know what their mindset is. If nothing else, if you're going to argue someone on the other side, know what they believe. Uh, don't just assume you do. Know what they believe. Pick up his book. On the other hand, if you don't trust science and you're looking for answers, then his book would also be good. And so I'm just going to bring it to a close here and uh, because the video is going long. <laughs> and, you know, I don't really like going more than 20 minutes. We only have so much attention span, and you may not even have lasted this long. 